How are you, Cedar? Are you doing good? Huh? You getting some vitamin C? D? You're getting vitamin D? Are you going to make it? I hope so. As long as I got you, I'll make it. This is the male peacock I bought about six months ago, and this is the closest he's been to our house in quite some time. I've been throwing birdseed out there trying to lure him back, and it seems to be slowly working, but he's definitely playing hard to get. The goal for this week was to get the roof dried in and finished. That started with driving over to my favorite sawmill in the neighboring community, picking up enough one by eight rough sawn lumber to do the fascia on the shop with. I didn't like the idea of putting the drip edge directly on the two by six, and I thought the one by eight rough sawn lumber would give it the right look, especially after we get the board and batten siding installed. I took about an inch off of these one by eights before I installed them. Seven inches seemed to be the perfect look. I've nearly got the front half of the shop covered with a Grace Ultra. And because I decided to install the one by eight after the fact, I'll have to carefully pull back the Grace Ultra to get the one by eight and the drip edge installed. Cedar is starting to feel better. She's a trooper. She doesn't let much keep her down. Soon enough, she'll be back on her feet. It's slowly starting to cool off. I see a little bit of rain on the horizon. So as fast as I can get this dried in, I can finish the awning over the firewood. And then the pressure is off just a bit. With the way everything's backed up right now with building materials, it's gonna take me a little bit to get the metal roofing. They're telling me it could be six weeks out, but I'm hoping I can get something done sooner. It seems that the way I do things, I have a tendency to learn the hard way. What I mean is the dug fir siding that I installed in the house has finally officially dried out since I installed it. And the upstairs where I did the board and batten siding looks perfect. And the downstairs where I did the horizontal siding now has significant gaps between the boards. I've considered using a polyurethane caulking that is collared to match the wood, but to me that's just putting a band-aid on it.
Cedar and I have been talking about taking that horizontal siding off, salvaging as much of it as we can, and making the entire house board and batten. The same board and batten that we have on the second story. The plan is to do the shop completely in board and batten siding. The one by 12 lumber that I'll use is sitting over at my favorite local sawmill, but it's gonna cost a small fortune to do that. In the meantime, I need to get the garage door installed. Once that's installed, it's airtight for the most part. I can then work on the insulation when I have time. The wood stove chimney kit has also shown up, so that will get installed as well while I'm working on the roof. The thing that I'm trying to avoid is being on that roof when there happens to be a thin layer of ice or moisture because the overnights are getting down below freezing. If you've followed us for the long haul or if you've seen some of the early videos when I was working on the roof on the house, the underlayment became quite slick as I was doing everything I could to get the roof finished before we got too far into winter. I don't want to do that with the shop. The shop is not the same pitch as the roof, but it's still steep enough. If there was some ice or moisture on the underlayment, I could easily slip and fall off. Maybe, just maybe, I'll get my harness out and knock the dust off it. The weather really is still unbelievable. The overnight lows are bumping up against freezing, but by the afternoon, I'm sweating. As they say, if you don't like the weather in Idaho, just wait a minute. With all the projects that I have lined up for all the years to come around our place, I would like to hope at some point I've learned to work with the seasons rather than working as fast as I can before the seasons change. As I've been installing the Grace Ultra underlayment, it's very, very obvious that this stuff is the best underlayment I've ever used. It's incredibly durable and the only place I've had issues is just getting it down perfectly flat. 
because it is so sticky in the warmer weather, I occasionally will have a wrinkle in it that I usually just walk on and push down with my boot. The only way I see getting around that is having a couple people helping me do this. But at this moment, that's not possible. So I got it done. I've been waiting on these two particular windows that are basically basement windows. These two windows right here would have been the windows in our kitchen had we continued to build on this original foundation and turned it into our house. That was why we wanted these windows here, to let as much light in as possible. The original plan for this foundation was to have a house that looks very similar to the house that we live in now. The only difference is it would have been a little bit bigger. So when we poured this original concrete foundation, I purchased the window jacks, knowing that I could buy the windows made by the same company, it would snap right in place. It might have taken me 30 minutes to get both of these windows installed. The only downside to these two windows was the cost. They weren't cheap. I got online and bought this basic wood stove chimney kit for less than $100. After shipping, it cost me right about 150 bucks. It got a little banged up in shipping, but nothing that I can't fix. This comes with everything that I need to install my wood stove, except for chimney pipe. This chimney kit meets code. It has the proper clearances and the barriers to keep the insulation from sitting up against the chimney pipe. And I use the same basic kit on the house. I will use triple wall stove pipe. Again, the same stuff I used on the house. Even on the coldest nights, when I've made an effort to get the wood stove as hot as I can get it, the triple wall chimney pipe that we used has never gotten too hot.
We considered doing a wall exit chimney kit, but there would be a lot of heat that would be lost if the chimney goes directly outside versus going 16 feet up in the air before it goes through the roof. I've already purchased some of the parts for the very large wood stove that I plan on using. I'm still waiting for a little bit more stove pipe to show up and then I'll start working on it. The three foot sections of triple wall stainless stove pipe were the most expensive part of this process. But again, I got online, did a little bit of work, ended up buying those pieces of stove pipe brand new for less than $75 a piece, including shipping. With all the regulations around wood burning stoves, it seems that less and less retail stores are carrying too much associated with wood stoves. But where we are, wood will be our source of heat for a long time to come. Because the plan has always been to burn wood in the shop as well, I'm gonna have to work extra hard to keep the firewood piled up. We still haven't gone up on the hill and collected the firewood that's been sitting and waiting for the last couple of years. But once the shop roof is dried in, and once the awning's built over the firewood, we'll have to spend a good solid week stacking up firewood. The gray soldier combined with the zip tape and the zip panels basically guarantees that I'll never have a roof leak. I wish I would have used the Grace Ultra on the house. Maybe at some point down the road I'll install it on the house, but I'm not looking forward to doing any more roofing than I have to do this year. As low as 40 degrees, as high as 90 degrees. That seems to be the optimum temperature to install the Grace Ultra. The Grace Ultra is so sticky that in the few places where I had it installed, where I had to peel it back to install the new fascia board and the drip edge, it really took some effort to peel the underlayment back. This is an awesome sign in cold country. As much as I love the corrugated tin and use it on everything, we're not gonna put it on the shop. With all the effort that we're putting into the shop to ensure that we don't have roof issues, we're going to install an R panel metal sheet that I'll get custom cut to length. So there shouldn't be any horizontal seams. That should be every bit of a 50 year roof, which means the next person that gets to deal with this roof won't be me.
Okay, roof is done. I'm waiting for my triple wall, uh, nine feet of chimney pipe to show up. Uh, but we're dried in. Uh, my only complaint, I, I don't know if this is uh, installation error or if it's just the fact that this stuff is a little bit hard to uh, keep totally flat, but that's my only, I, I wouldn't even say complaint. I would guess that if I did it in 15 foot pieces like the manufacturer recommends, I wouldn't have as much of the wrinkles in it, but the stuff is so sticky. Once it goes down, it ain't coming up, wrinkles or without. So anyway, I'm gonna take my roller that I had for the, uh, the zip tape and go over the entire roof with the roller to make sure it's down and not going anywhere. Uh, but next step is uh, metal roofing. Um, it looks like we got weather coming in this weekend so I'm good that way. It is dried in. Um, you know, this can sit exposed for quite a while, but I do not want that to happen. My goal is to get the tin up as soon as I possibly can, get the chimney installed, um, get the wood stove built, and uh, be prepared to stay warm. This coming Sunday's video should be a conclusion to the chimney install, as well as more work on the awning, and hopefully a little bit of work on the off-grid cabin, if the weather holds out.